The Unshackled Ways, episode 138. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. I hope you all had a great Easter and welcome to the new Unshackled studio. Uh, it will improve both the video and uh, audio experience for you. Uh, it's still not completed. I'm still using a USB uh, microphone and uh, webcam, but as you can see, we've got uh, beautiful Melbourne in the background. Our professional mics, uh, will, when they're ready, will be able to accommodate in-studio guests. And also, uh, start, uh, starting now, uh, we will catch up on all the wave shows that we've delayed over the past few weeks and increase our output and uh, line up some more exciting guests for you. Uh, the news this week, the uh, federal government's uh, company tax cuts failed to get enough uh, crossbench support in the uh, Senate, so they've been uh, put on the, the back burner for the time being. Uh, the Australian uh, cricket uh, ball tampering scandal resulted in uh, 12 months bans for uh, Captain Steve Smith and Vice Captain David Warner and uh, Cameron Bancroft, the uh, bowler who uh, did the ball tampering by putting it uh, down his undies, he got a nine-month uh, ban and all three gave uh, tearful uh, apology press conferences. Uh, the Victorian Parliament descended into a crisis this week. The Andrews government pounced on a, a sick uh, crossbencher and tried to rush through their uh, merger of the uh, Metropolitan and uh, country Fire Authority, which would have attacked the autonomy of uh, Country Fire Authority uh, volunteers. The Upper House uh, sat into Good Friday. Uh, two Liberal uh, MLCs, uh, Bernie Finn and Edward o O'Donoghue, reneged on a uh, pairing arrangement for religious observance for Good Friday and returned to vote the bill down. Uh, so both parties here broke uh, pairing conventions because the sick crossbencher Rachel Carling Jenkins was denied a pair and it certainly sets up a turbulent election year in Victoria. In the United States following the Parkland uh, shooting, uh, student demonstrations uh, continue. Uh, the March for Our Lives was uh, held uh, with uh, alleged survivors uh, David Hogg and uh, Emma Gonzalez uh, taking uh, centre stage. Meanwhile, uh, porn star Stormy Daniels has been busy telling the media that she slept with uh, Trump back in 2006. Uh, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation found the backlash to their uh, kids' uh, privilege bridge video too much and deleted their uh, Facebook page, but they've still been busy promoting the video, which it seems that they still think its message is good. And meanwhile, uh, the left in Victoria observed uh, Easter uh, through holding their annual Marxism conference. To discuss the holiday news, Unshackled contributor Logan Spalding joined us. Logan, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me on. Uh, you're the first uh, guest with the, the new setup here, the uh, new set with the audio uh, settings. So uh, welcome. Uh, it looks all good on your end. Yeah, I feel honoured, actually. Just need to green screen myself now because I just all I have is your dad's curtains. No, this is actually <laughs> Melbourne that I've got in the background. Shh, don't give the game. Oh, away. yeah. Oh, damn it. Not ever done. <laughs> Now, probably the, the biggest uh, news of uh, the past week and uh, over this uh, Easter period has come out of the United States. They, uh, the gun control movement is feeling uh, renewed after the uh, Parkland uh, shooting. They've held a, a number of uh, rallies uh, using uh, students. Of course, the, the leaders of this new gun control movement are uh, alleged Parkland survivors, uh, David Hogg and uh, Emma Gonzalez. There's already been the uh, Enough National uh, School walkout on March uh, 14th, and, uh, on, and then they had the, the March uh, for Our Lives, which was uh, last, last Saturday with... Uh, it was a demonstration in Washington, D.C., with other, other similar demonstrations taking place in, in other uh, cities. Uh, now, 
it's it seems really like there, there's this theory that uh, Hogg and Gonzalez are uh, crisis actors, which seems a bit far fetched. But it's it seems bizarre that you know uh, uh, a month ago these two were regular high school students, and now you know they're you know they're only teenagers. Now they're you know being put out as the the spokespeople for you know gun control. It it, it just seems like an odd fit. Yeah, well, I think what is happening is they're basically using these two people as tokens for emotion. So they're going, oh, look, these people here, they were, they experienced it. Let's give them everything. Let's blah, 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 blah. But the thing is that um, when, it, when it comes to um, this whole issue of them and gun control, people have got to realize that, yes, they went through a bad, terrible, terrible time and the school got shot at where several people have died but that's not going to deter from the facts because now they've lost that now the left and all the media and the establishment when it comes to gun control have lost when it comes to facts so now they're trying to um, touch our emotions by using um, school kids. Uh, and uh, uh, they're trying to, you know, they've got uh, uh, Gonzalez and Hogg as, you know, spokespeople saying, you know, these are the people we want to be the, the activists. But uh, then if you criticise them, it's like, oh, you're having a go at, you know, just these uh, children. And, uh, of course, we oh. saw that card uh, played this week when uh, Fox News host Laura Ingram, she, she put out a tweet which... Uh, uh, criticised Hogg, uh, uh, pointed out that uh, he'd been rejected from four colleges, which is, uh, it's not really related to, you know, his uh, uh, gun control uh, act activism, but, you know, Hogg was very offended uh, by this and called for an advertiser boycott of a show, the, the Ingram uh, angle, and, you know, saying oh. that, oh, you know, she, she was uh, criticising children. What, are you activists or, you know, children? You can't have it uh, both ways. And, of course, you know, uh, advertisers, you know, all these corporations, you know, they're, well, they're, they've actually, um, you know, been, you know, involved in this latest gun control campaign. You know, they're, they're trying to get them to withdraw from the, the NRA and block uh, pay, uh, payments for, uh, for guns. Uh, and so these advertisers, you know, they, they weltered and uh, a few of them have withdrawn uh, advertising. Yeah, well, it's, I view it more as not activism but lobbying. They um, would prefer, you know, that, that obviously we all have our opinions. You know, I can go out and protest because I think wearing underpants on your head might be a good idea. But I'm not going to go out and start enforcing that, that everyone that I see that does not have underwear on their head is a bad person or they um, they have some kind of phobia when it comes to this kind of thing. So it seems to me like it is more of a bullying campaign. Um, it's, it seems to me like they're trying to bully people into agreeing with them and they're using children as a means to do that. And in fact, there was this moment where... Um, <laughs> Ben Shapiro had said that some, well, I can't remember the particular case he stated, but it is out there, where someone had, um, a shooter was going to shoot at his school, but they decided to go down to another school because Ben Shapiro's school was actually armed. They had armed guards there. So to also to say that um, to take away weapons, take away all guns will do uh, will like do the right thing will stop all the shootings is ridiculous because uh, people are there's always going to be illegal weapons out there there's always going to be criminals criminals are always going to find their way to get their hands on the guns legal or not the only thing you're doing when you have a gun ban is taking um, guns away from good people who would defend themselves and also uh, a bit of <coughs> informations come out about uh... Uh, Emma Gonzalez uh, treatment of the the shooter uh, Nicholas Cruz yeah. uh, which yeah. uh, she has actually uh, admitted herself that now it's it, it, she um, 
you know, has admitted to somewhat uh, enabling the, the bullying of uh, crews. Now, it was interesting that PolitiFact said this uh, allegation was uh, false, but uh, I just thought it'd be worth reading the, uh, the tweet that uh, Emma Gonzalez uh, uh, called, called attention to. Uh, so many signs that the Florida shooter was mentally disturbed, even expelled for bad and erratic behaviour. Neighbours and classmates knew he was a big problem. Must always report such instances to authorities again and again. And again. We did time and time again since he was in middle school, and it was no surprise to anyone who knew him to hear that he was the shooter. Those talking about how we should have not ostracised him, you didn't know this kid. Okay, we did. We know that... They are claiming mental health issues, and I'm not a psychologist, uh, but we need to pay attention to the fact that this was not just a mental health issue. He would not have harmed that many students with a knife. So she's basically saying, you know, we will write to, you know, ba basically shun this, you know, st uh, you know, boy and, you know, make him even worse. So I didn't know that it was actually that bad when it came to her and her bullying. So this is the thing that I'm disgusted about, is the fact that she's not apologising for bullying him. She's rather justifying her bullying of him. Is that, that's, that's, not, that's not right. I think that what, they, what they should be coming out of all these uh, shootings is an anti-bullying campaign. And... Try and work out the mental state of people before they flip. Because he obviously flipped for a reason. And Emma Gonzalez contributed to that reason. So I'm going to say it right now. When she bullies someone, if that bully now goes out and starts shooting her, she's got the blood on her hands now. Because she made him flip with her continuous harassment and bullying that everyone done, the shunning, all that kind of stuff. When you see someone that has a mental issue, you're not supposed to shun them. You're supposed to, you know, bring them in and make them feel included and acceptable like everyone else, or else they're going to flip out and they're going to start doing things like this. So now Emma Gonzalez is um, trying to find a scapegoat to justify her bullying, and it's not right. And it was also uh, white privilege's fault uh, as well that oh. uh, uh, crew shut, uh, sh shut off the s shut up the school. Uh, she retweeted uh, another uh, Twitter user. Uh, who said, if bullying caused uh, school shootings, you would see trans shooters, queer shooters, female shooters, person of colour shooters. Bullying does not cause school shootings, entitlement does. And white boys are the most entitled demographic uh, by far. They don't understand the irony of it, do they? That was just an entire sentence of complete racism and bullying to call an entire race of people the, um, what was the word again? Entitled. Entitled. To call an entire race of people the most entitled people ever, that's ridiculous. That's what's going to cause these things. Because if you are going to someone, hey, look at the colour of your skin, you're white, you must be A, B, C, D, E, that is racism. And all these people don't throw this thing at me of reverse racism doesn't exist. I agree with you. Reverse racism doesn't exist. It's simply racism. No two ways about it. And to to um, belittle someone based on the colour of their skin, to make assumptions that they are entitled just because they have a lighter shade of skin to you is downright racism, bullying, and you are inciting the kind of violence that you are now campaigning against. And she's basically saying that, you know, white privilege, like if you try and put those two, two tweets together, she's saying white privilege is a, you know, mental illness, which, you know, people need to, you know, seek treatment for. That's what basically she's saying. Oh, my God. Whoa. You don't mind if I make a little call to the psych ward? Hey, how you going? Yeah, I've got white privilege. Can you just send people down here, please? I'm about to flip out. Shut up. What is wrong with her? To, to say that, you know, white privilege is a mental illness, that would be a mental illness that doesn't exist. 
you know, if you can call people that are homeless on the street white privileged, can you go out and call the South African farmers privileged? Can you go out and call all these people living um, paycheck to paycheck, working themselves to the bone? If you call that white privileged, then I don't want any part of it. I, I don't know how PolitiFact, they, they rated, you know, this, uh, this uh, 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 admission that uh, Emma Gonzalez believed the, the school shooter is false. I mean, I'm reading, you know, what they, they published here and we both come to different conclusions. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, th I think she should be tried for her bullying, but that's it because, you know, th what she's done has cost people their lives. Well, well, she, well, obviously, she's continuing that, uh, uh, those bullying ways uh, now. I mean, she's trying to, you know, bully corporations, the government to, you know, pass, you know, gun control. If you, you know, you don't do what I, I, I want, you know, I'm going to, you know, be this, you know, gun victim for the rest of my life. Yeah, she, it's, it's a victim, victim mentality thing going on here. It, Whoever cries the victim the most is apparently more, more valid and justified nowadays because it all comes down to feelings and not facts, unfortunately. You know, people have thrown away facts. They've started listening to people that are terrible, terrible people. She's terrible. She bullied someone to the point that they flipped, cost all these innocent people their lives, and now she's at the forefront of fighting against gun violence when she's the one who caused it. That is just oh, something needs to happen in the U.S. Something something needs to change because I think people are starting to lose their minds little by little. They're starting to lose their minds when it comes to um, all this, all, all the feelings versus facts thing. It's driven people crazy. Now we're listening to bullies who sent someone over the edge. Uh, we're we're taking advice from someone who is generally a terrible person for the things she's done. I think something needs to change in the US and it needs to change quickly before things start getting out of hand. Well, when the US mainstream media, when they're not having uh, David Hogg and Emma Gonzalez on the, the TV every day, they're uh, promoting uh, Stormy Daniels, uh, who is a, a porn star. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say porn star. I should say adult entertainer. Oh. That's the politically oh. correct... Uh, adult entertainer, because, I mean, Justin Bieber's an adult entertainer. I think, you know, saying adult entertainer is a broad, broad spectrum. Mm. And they've just gone and said anyone who is an adult entertainer is um, is now a porn star. That's hilarious. Now <laughs> it's like, I mean, there's plenty of musicians that are adults and they're entertainers, so... Now, she's alleged that she had an affair with Trump in 2006. This was after uh, Melania Trump gave birth to their son, uh, Barron, and she's alleged that uh, Trump's personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, paid her uh, $130,000 uh, in a non-disclosure agreement during the, the 2016 presidential ca campaign. Uh, now, Daniels is trying to invalidate this uh, non-disclosure agreement. Well, she it hasn't stopped, uh, you know, violating it, uh, say, uh, saying that, you know, Trump didn't sign it. But it's interesting, Michael Cohen, he's suing Stormy Daniels not to uh, keep the uh, details of the affair quiet, but to prevent her from disclosing details of the non-disclosure uh, agreement. And mm. because he's actually denied that he paid her this money to, um, you know, uh, keep quiet about the... Uh, the alleged affair. Now, uh, as I said, uh, you know, the, whatever the you know terms of this agreement is, uh, you know, Stormy Daniels, she's uh, you know she's been uh, on 60 Minutes America uh, with Anderson Cooper, who appeared to be network hopping, and you know she she gave us such gems as you know she could describe you know Donald Trump's you know genitals and you know this is they're always looking for the smoking gun the the u.s media that could bring down trump you know now it's this yeah you know, uh, alleged affair with you know this porn star yeah look honestly i think people starting to just it, what i've what i've noticed is everyone just jumps on the anti-trump train one thing doesn't work they'll go and search and i'll go and find something else that doesn't work and my belief is you know who cares if trump slept with 
her. Who, who gives a shit? Like, I mean, honestly, if I, if people started caring about the amount of people I've slept with, for he, ha ha, mm-hmm. no one wants to know what the end result would be. <laughs> well, yeah. So, that's... I mean, what? It, they're only doing this because they want to bring down Trump one way or another. Like, they, the, the only thing that they had on Trump was when he took two sips of water and everyone freaked out. It's like, like let the man drink. There's no hidden message between him taking two sips of water. And that's, that's how far they got to scraping the bottom of the barrel to try and bring Trump down. Well, guess what, CNN? Guess what, the left? Trump is in, and Trump is in to stay. The Americans voted for him, and that is what you get. You get Trump. And I agree with you. Who cares? I mean, we knew Trump, you know, was a womanizer, you know, before he, you know, was elected president. I mean, this was, you know, a businessman who owned the rights to, you know, the Miss USA and Miss Universe, you know, pageant where, you know, there's, <laughs> yeah, they have swimsuit, you know, sections. And, you know, even though, you know, he, you know, ran as a Republican candidate who, uh, you know, the Republican Party has traditionally been the party of social conservatives. He didn't, you know, sell himself as, you know, a, you know, social conservative. I mean, he'd been married. Uh, he, he was on his, you know, third marriage. He, you know, confessed to infidelity before. And, you know, the American people, uh, you know, they, you know, voted for Trump as he was. I mean, the Access Hollywood tape where, you know, where he said, you know, uh, I'm so famous I can, you know, grab women by the pussy. That came out in the middle of the, the campaign with a couple of weeks to go and he was, you know, still elected. So, you know, why <laughs> would we care that, you know, he had an affair with a porn star, you know, 10 years ago? You know, my, well, the, what I want to say to him is congratulations, well done. If only I had that kind of privilege too, but I don't. So, <sighs> well done, Trump. And I, I mean, like, what is wrong with the porn star like what's her issue with it she has just slept with the president of the united states of america i mean i'm straight and i would sleep with the united states the president of the united states of america because it's the bloody president (laughs) yeah i mean obviously nobody knew who you know stormy daniels was before she you know made this uh, claim and now you know she's the the mainstream media's you know best friend so you know we can see you know what the benefit is to her and it's not exactly like you know the i i think it's wise that you know it's being handled by you know trump's personal lawyer who you know hasn't he's not really being heavy-handed with this he's you know it's just all about the uh, disclosure agreement because yeah I think yeah. You know, I, I think Trump knows you know personally that you know this is, isn't a, isn't a big deal yeah well it isn't a big deal the guy's running a country he doesn't have time to worry about um, which porn star said what or oh, sorry 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 I'm so bad I'm so I'm get I'm so sorry for my white male privilege I meant adult entertainer I'm pretty sure he doesn't care like um, that he's slept with an adult entertainer. He's got better things to worry about right now. And the funny thing is that all these people, no one was saying anything about Trump. No one was saying jack about Trump until he wanted to run for president. That's when everyone started freaking out. And, and it's funny because I saw a funny, uh, I saw a T-shirt. You know how they keep going on about how Trump rigged the elections, blah, blah, blah. I saw this hilarious T-shirt of a Hillary supporter um, with her uh, Hillary shirt on that, and she had a sign that said, the elections aren't rigged, you're just losing. Now, I'm just laughing at the irony of that because Hillary lost, and then the, these same pe- people that said that um, the re- elections aren't rigged turn around and start saying the elections are rigged because of the result they got a result they didn't want. And, I mean, now you have all these allegations coming out about Trump and all these tapes, all these weird, weird things from so long ago. And all these people just want to jump on the anti-Trump train. Uh, and they've tried to compare, like, you know, this scandal with, you know, Bill uh, Clinton's affair with, you know, Monica Lewinsky. But there's a big difference there. You know, Trump hasn't slept with Stormy Daniels in the, the Oval Office and then lied about it under oath, which is what Clinton had done. And, you know, this yeah. relationship was consensual. And let's remember, Bill Clinton has been accused of, you know, rape uh, by, you know, multiple women, you know, uh, 
they are the are the only women who you know came uh, came out with you know allegations against Trump was you know in the you know pre a president uh, during the the last few weeks of the presidential campaign when he'd been a candidate for eighteen weeks and was you know just after the access you know Holly Hollywood tapes you know uh, and you know the the difference between these two is you know these you know women who accused Trump you know they just said it to the media and that was it while uh you know the these women who you know Paula Jones, for example, had accused Bill uh, Bill Clinton of um, sexual misconduct. Actually, sued him, and he paid you know eight hundred fifty thousand dollars in uh, compensation. So you know they're they're two completely different things. To say that you know yeah. um, you know Donald Trump, you know he's you know he he's you know obviously he's you know uh, quite a you know red blooded heterosexual man, but it's you know consensual. It's not like you know Bill Clinton who you know yeah. you know has to force himself. Well, I notice that this this is, seems to be a tactic of the left now is to exaggerate things, try and liken the situation to the worst thing possible. So they try and liken Trump to literally Hitler. When what has he done that Hitler has done apart from breathing and drinking water or anything like that? What has he killed anyone? Has he um, built death camps? Has he turned on? complete communities no so they try and liken something to the worst thing possible and now they're trying to liken trump having a consensual sexual relationship with an adult entertainer right they're trying to liken that to rape no that doesn't that it doesn't work that way i'm sorry <laughs> Now let's turn uh, back to uh, Australia and the the ABC, uh, our Australian Broadcasting Corporation. It's uh, called our ABC, but it's uh, their ABC, the left's ABC. They've been at it again. Last week it was their their comedy channel, uh, you know, calling a conservative candidate a, a cunt. Now, uh, what happened this week is there was their children's uh, channel, ABC Me. Uh, released a song uh, last year called the the Privilege Bridge, where it had uh, two uh, people uh, trying to cross a river. Ross, a successful white guy who was able to teleport across the river, and then Stevie, a refugee who uh, drowned on her way uh, cr uh, crossing the the river. Now this uh, video, and it was a really cringy rhyme rap video with uh, two uh, oh. female uh, presenters, one with a nose ring and one who was uh, Asian and it was shared by I believe this uh, popular Facebook page memes for the Ur urban gentleman so I, I saw it pop on my uh, newsfeed all the time and uh, people you know uh, quite rightly you know commented you know on the video saying how you know disgusting it was that the ABC was promoting you know the concept of you know white privilege divisive identity politics to uh, children and of course the ABC they they couldn't keep up with uh, deleting critical comments and so they just deleted the whole ABC me page in the end <laughs> well that's actually a victory they've just destroyed themselves like I wish I could actually take down the ABC but I can't <laughs> oh, well, they, they said ABC me they'll still uh, communicate with their audience through uh, the, uh, the ABC's iview app and also their YouTube channel. Now, the difference between Facebook and YouTube is is Facebook, uh, you can't disable comments. On uh, YouTube, uh, you can, but you also, uh, also cannot uh, disable the uh, likes and dislikes. And so I think it's, it's hardly managed to get 100 likes this video uh, now, <laughs> but it's managed to get, I think, at last counting over 6,000 uh, dislikes. So, you know, we're still able to, you know, air our, you know, dissatisfaction with this video. And of course, the ABC, by posting it to, you know, YouTube and disabling the comments, is basically unapologetic and saying we don't care about the comp complaints. Oh, well, I mean, if they keep up that kind of attitude of we don't care about the complaints, no one's going to watch them and they're going to disappear. Like no, what happens? To... Uh, they, they'll still get the one billion dollars of taxpayers' money every year. It doesn't matter what their ratings oh. are. I mean, they still get the money. Jesus. Well, what are they going to do with it then? Uh, that's, so, that's the thing. So, our taxpayers' money is going to them to tell us 
how terrible we are for being white and male. So we're paying them to basically tell us we are such terrible human beings because of things that I can't change about myself or the way I'm born. That is hilarious. Yeah. I, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like there should be you know, a, a parody video called uh, The Taxpayer Funded Privilege Bridge where it has you know, a two, uh, two different TV presenters, uh, one who has you know, leftist social justice views and then one who has conservative views. They try to make you know, a you know, video about their views and one is privileged because you know, they get all the taxpayer f funds and the other has to basically you know, fund it all themselves and you know, make an on honest living by you know, making it commercially viable. Yeah, actually, that would be very interesting. But you just watch them get set off if you, if anyone ever done that. That would be. I, I'm looking to someone out there. Please do this. This will be. Uh, you'll make my day, and you'll take down the ABC further. It's hilarious because I'm trying to work out how to call it. The, you know how to say the ABC comedy thing, right? I'm trying to work out whether their content is meant to be funny, or their company is just a massive joke. That's what I'm trying to work out. Uh, well, yeah, the, a the ABC's comedy uh, channel, their flagship program, Tonightly, which, uh, which of course, we, we discussed last week with their abuse of a conservative candidate, they uh, did a follow-up video to the Privilege Bridge called The, the Internet Song, which uh, they had uh, two people, Carol, who is a you know, successful woman who shares you know, nice things on uh, Facebook about you know, dogs and recipes, and then Kevin, who's this you know, evil, you know, unsuccessful, you know, alt-right you know, troll, and you know, because he feels you know, mean and angry at his situation, you know, he attacks this, you know, poor, innocent, you know, kids video and shares it with his friends, and leaves all these mean comments. And it's interesting that the two comedians who performed it, the, um, uh, the main one who's meant to, you know, be the, the girl with the no nose ring, I notice she's a lot, you know, fatter and uglier than the original one. And then the <coughs> other one, because uh, in the original video, the other girl's Asian, uh, she... Uh, this comedian is white and she puts on a black wig appearing to do, you know, yellow face, which, you know, shouldn't people be, you know, Asians be offended by this, you know, racism? Well, it's funny because when it comes to Asians, they tend to not be offended. The Asian community doesn't give a fuck what anyone says about them. I could walk through Chinatown making racist faces and doing racist shit. I might get one or two people looking at me like, you're a dickhead. But I'm, ne I'm not going to have you know, half of North Korea chasing me uh, on my tail. So the Asian community, I don't think they'd really get pretty upset at this kind of stuff unless they really do have feelings as soft as a feather. But basically the, the ABC was, you know, saying with this, you know, video that anyone who, you know, attacks them for trying to indoctrinate uh, children, you know, as an alt-right loser uh, troll. And, and they basically, uh, and they also said, oh, you can't attack, you know, a children's, uh, you know, TV page. So what if, like, a children's channel was putting out it's ISIS propaganda can. for, uh, for example, <laughs> you know, you can't attack that because you're attacking a children's channel. How dare you? <laughs> So I just want to picture what the propaganda would look like. <laughs> I can actually picture like the children's ads. It's like, <laughs> are you bored with your fire truck and police car? Try this vest, run out into a supermarket and press the button and see what happens. But anyways, so yeah, I, I love how they use the whole children's children's thing of, oh, you can't attack us because we're talking to like, we're, we're a kid's channel. I don't care if it's a kid's channel. If this kid's channel is indoctrinating children and telling children, you know, they, um, they, they are the worst people because they are white, that's, I, don't want, I don't want children viewing this kind of thing. I, the children lately from the left have been the main targets of their attack and abuse. We have the Safe Schools program, and now we have this ABC Kids bullshit. It's funny you mention. And it's, uh, it's got to end somewhere. It's funny that you mention uh, safe schools because uh, this ABC Me channel, they've been promoting the 
LGBT agenda to children. They've got this uh, TV series uh, presented by the girl with the, the nose ring. I mean, if you have a nose ring, you shouldn't be educating children. That's just a horrible... <coughs> Uh, example they have this series called what it's yeah. like and for and three of the six episodes are on lgbt issues there's what it's like to be you know queer where they have you know like uh, uh, this you know 12 and 13 year old bo uh, boys who you know are like gay and like sort of like with they're having these you know young children talk about you know their, you know, sexuality, that sort of seems like totally inappropriate. Then they've got, you know, what it's like to be transgender and then what it's like to have same-sex parents. I mean, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, ch uh, channel, alleged children's channel, it hasn't just been this privilege video. They've, they're at it with everything. And, of course, there was their infamous Happy Mardi Gras video, which said it was a family event. Oh... It's it's shocking because you know when I was a kid, right? I thought the TV ratings, the what the what they classified movies was ridiculous. You know, like some movies, in my eyes, PG were rated M. But now, for some reason, everything has just been thrown to our children. This is too much for our children to take. They when you're six. You don't want to hear about um, Johnny the female or um, Alice the man. You know, you don't want to hear about all these um, these weird things that are going on around you. You just want to shut up and you want to play with your toys. You know, you want to go and go to your school, have, do your classes and that kind of stuff. But you know, they're trying to indoctrinate the new the new humans among us. They're trying to indoctrinate our children. You know, they can't come after us because they know, we know too much. We already know what their agenda is. So now they're trying to um, go after our children. And this is how I foresee it in the future, is if you've ever seen Mao's Last Dancer, um, how if anyone speaks out against the government, like the, the Chinese government would tell the children, if you, if you overhear your parents say anything bad about the government, you let us know and we'll take care of it. It's turning into something like that, so that if the kid goes to school, the kid tells the teacher, uh, um, oh, my dad said that um, just because you say you're female, you're not actually female. Um, it just comes down to biology. Then that teacher, I'm talking about 10 years in the future or even less, sadly, could then go and tell the authorities and they'll be at my door for hate speech. So we're turning into an Orwellian time now. It's We should have read George Orwell's 1984 a lot sooner and worked out how to stop the events from happening in that book to happening in real life. But it seems that the left has really pushed this Orwellian totalitarian agenda. And now they're coming after our children. Now, while most of us uh, celebrated uh, Easter with our uh, family, the, the left, uh, they uh, commemorate Easter with their annual Marxism conference where they plan how we're going to live in a, a communist utopia. Now, Logan, you went to the Marxism conference on uh, Good Friday. Can you describe what you observed? Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> I, I saw something that was record-breaking, like, you know, I wish everyone was there to see it because I have never seen anything like this before. The left, wait for it, don't be surprised, the left actually shut up for once. They stopped making noise. And now we went there with Neil um, and Neil and Co, basically, and all these people, rocked up there and they formed a line and... We couldn't get through that line, and they wouldn't answer our questions. The odour there was bloody terrible. It's like they hadn't showered in ages, probably because they're trying to work out how to live around water shortages in communist countries. But the odour was bad. Um, all these people were just staying there, really getting angry, wanting to punch us up in the face and that kind of stuff. You could see it in their eyes. But the scenes I saw there was just... I actually thought it was hilarious and funny. Um, 
to say the least, because I'm just like, I've never seen the, the left like this before. Usually they're in the streets and they're the loudest people out there, but for the first time they're actually the quietest people. And I think that they should probably remain along those lines for the rest of their lives. You know, just be quiet. Stop talking. It's probably because, you know, when they go to, you know, uh, protest, you know, patriot events or, you know, whatever else, you know, they've like rehearsed their lines for, what is it, a day beforehand. And so when, you know, Neil Erickson, you know, shows up on the on the day, they're like, oh, shit, you know, we haven't, you know, come up with anything to, you know, say, oh, you know, what uh, what can we do? Like, oh, you know, <laughs> just shut up. Like, you know, that that's probably the, the <laughs> safest way. It's, it's like, you know, you know how, you, you know how I view it? It's like a kid that has just been caught doing the wrong thing. It's like, Johnny, did you have your hand in the chocolate cake? And Johnny stands there and does nothing, says nothing, because he can't think of anything to say. So they couldn't even make up a, they can't even make up a chant. And um, Neil made up one on the spot, and I thought it was just the most hilarious thing to see that for the first time ever, it, despite having two megaphones, one of them, one of which was a complete bullhorn. Like, it was massive, and they didn't even think to use those, you know. And of course, they let the huge lady carry the bullhorn. What else would you do? But they had a massive freaking bullhorn, and another person was just staying there, shaking like this, with his other megaphone. And I thought it was bizarre. It's like you know, they had just, they have. It's like. Kim Jong-un has personally told them not to say anything, and they have a gag order on them now, so they can't say anything. So I think they're getting ready for being silenced in a socialist country. That's what they're training for right now. Well, the the left in Melbourne, they've been pretty <laughs> quiet uh, lately. I mean, they, they they haven't showed up at you know any. They didn't show up at the Protect Victoria rally. They didn't show up at the you know free speech rally, even though you know the they, you know, hate, uh, you know, us wanting to take action on crime or, you know, defending <laughs> uh, free speech. So I just wonder, you know, if it's how, how how come all of a sudden, you know, they've gone quiet? I mean, last year, you know, they, they bas uh, basically incited, you know, an African riot outside the My, My Leganopolis event. Yeah. Well, what, what, what I think happened is after the My Leganopolis event, they were all a bit too afraid to leave their safe spaces. And this is the first time they've come out of their safe space and they're just starting to get used to Melbourne and that kind of thing again. It's just like, oh, yeah, people do have differing opinions. How am I going to do to handle this? I'm going to stay quiet, which I think is a very good idea for them because I'm sick of hearing them. But, um, no, in all honesty, what I, I feel like they're up to something because, you know, when the loudest person... Let's say you're at a party and the loudest person in the room suddenly goes dead quiet and you don't hear from them. You know something's going on. You know something's about to happen because it's like the build-up. You, you feel the build-up coming. It's like where are they? What are they doing? What are they planning? Is this an illusion? Are they just doing this to get us in a panicky mood or what? You know. So that's what I think is happening in all honesty. I think we should be very soon watching out for the left and what they could be up to. And, but of course, looking at, you know, the idea of having, you know, Marxism conference, I mean, you know, this is, a, you know, ideology that, you know, <laughs> in the 20th century led to, you know, the death of over, you know, 100 million people. And, you know, they think, you know, uh, you know, it's so good that, you know, we should, you know, repeat it in the, the 21st century. Yeah, well... You can see how much care they have for human life, how much they actually value humans. And to repeat an ideology that continuously has failed in every single country it has been in and continues to fail to this day is just pure insanity. I think um, Einstein said that, um, I think it was Einstein, he's like, um, madness is repeating the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. That's, um, that's madness. And for them to continuously 
still keep saying, oh, but wait a second, that wasn't proper communism. It's like, well, when are we going to get to proper communism? Democracy took one try and succeeded. What happened to communism? Why isn't this working? You know, and they just keep going, oh, but North Korea is no longer a communist country because they're, they're blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, they're a communist country. You read it and you see it is communist to the core. You know, and they keep on saying, oh, but it just keeps failing. Oh, but we'll try again next time. We'll try again next time. Just accept defeat. Communism is never going to work. But even though, but I must admit that sometimes for some of the people you see on the left at the protests, um, I think communism would actually be a good diet for them. Yeah, that, uh, I love those memes that say, um, you know, if you want a diet book that, that works, uh, read the Communist Manifesto. Because you know, they, they, they complain about, you know, like poverty, you know, in Australia. And there are, you know, people who, you know, do, li you know, do, you know, live on not much money. But, you know, no one starves in Australia. I mean, no one's, you know, going to die Hello. on the street in starvation. Yet, you know, in, you know, North Korea, they're starving, you know, all the time. There was, you know, the famines in, you know, uh, communist China and, you know, Russia. I mean, that was... That, that is like way worse compared to, um, you know, just, you know, getting, having to shop with, you know, yeah. essentials card. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, I saw this photo one time. It was really, really, really depressing and kind of brought a tear to my eye because it was this man in North Korea who was literally picking grass and putting on a plate because he had nothing to eat. So he was left to eat grass. I love how these people... They talk about how much poverty they're going through from their iPhone. They keep on pulling out their iPhone to go, oh, I'm so poor, you know. It's like, but, you know, take a look over in the countries that have the exact government you want. Of How are the people going over there? They're lucky, they're lucky to get a fucking um, Nokia, you know. They're lucky to get any phone at all. So... I mean, if they want to talk about poverty, maybe they can go over to North Korea and have a good experience of what communism is like. And you tr I trust you that they'll come back capitalist as anything. Uh, oh, it's, they, they, they say that, you know, for people to, you know, value, um, you know, we uh, Western, you know, freedom and, you know, capitalism and prosperity, you need to, you know, suffer... Uh, un under uh, communism, so um, you know if if they if they did go to you know Cuba or you know North Korea, uh, you would hope that you know given these people are just you know so insane that you know they may actually think that their you know suffering is noble. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, this is the thing. Do they really care about the worker if they're saying that the worker can go and get fucked? I. I don't know. It's, it's if they really want to commun if they really want communism, they don't have to live in Australia because just because they want it doesn't mean everyone else is going to want it. And if they really want to, if they really want to experience communism, they can go to a communist country. But I mean, I will, I challenge them to try and find any communist country um, that is fully functioning well where people are living a privileged life. I challenge them to find that country and then come back to me and tell me about it because they they want communism but without knowing what communism really is and what it's really like to live under. Uh, well, we won't hold our, our breath that they'll have an epiphany uh, sometime soon, but uh, that's all we've got time for for this week's show. I hope that we caught up on all the news that we've missed. Uh, thank you, Logan, for, for coming back on the show. And no problem. your uh, show, Culture Clash, is coming back soon? Oh, uh, it definitely is. I'm just sorting everything out now. I've actually, over here, this is going to be my new background. So I saw it in the house. I'm like, that actually looks really cool. So um, it looks like I know a lot of stuff. But... Um, yeah, so it's definitely coming back, and I'm just getting everything all sorted out, ready for it to go, and hopefully within a week or two, I will be back at it again. Well, we look forward to it. Thank you very much.
All right, everybody, that's the show for today. If you would like to see the footage of Neil Erickson at Marxism 2018, they are on our YouTube channel. Other events we'll be present at and reporting from are the Justice for Jalal rally. Jalal was a 13-year-old boy who was hit and killed by an unlicensed African driver who only received 80 hours community service. It will be on Sunday the 15th of April at 1pm at Victoria's Parliament House. There is also the Rally Against uh, Safe Schools, which is on Saturday the 21st of April at 1pm, also at Victoria's Parliament House. It is uh, being held to coincide with the National uh, Sex Ed Sit-Out, which is on Monday the April 23rd, when uh, parents will withdraw their children from school uh, for the day to uh, protest against uh, safe schools and other programs that sexualise children. So I hope you can join us for both of these in if you are in the Melbourne area, as people on the right need to get out onto the streets for uh, politicians to pay attention. Also, don't forget, if you want to take The Unshackled even further and score some awesome rewards, please consider becoming a, a patron of The Unshackled at patreon.com slash The Unshackled. Also, don't forget, we have our online store, Upright Market, where you can purchase Unshackled merchandise and other gear for right-thinking people. Uh, so please uh, make your way over there if you're looking for some awesome gear. Thanks once again for your company and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.